Hello Minecrafters, Arctic Shark Games here coming at you with another Minecraft Bedrock Edition command tutorial. Today's tutorial is going to be on how to use a DX, DY, DZ area to select a square or rectangular area rather than using a radius for your commands. So for today's video we have a beautiful frog light square here that I have prevented myself from entering. If you look whenever I fly at this square from any different type of angle it prevents me from entering it and teleports me back to a certain position here. You can use a DX, DY, DZ area for lots of different types of things. I use them around my server for things like parkour checkpoints, um, things like a world border, uh, how to select a person just on one specific block rather than doing any kind of radius. Um, you know, lots of things like that. I use them on my money transfer station, for example. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and get into how to do a DX, DY, DZ area. So what I have right here is a repeat command, and I set it right here with a piece of redstone rather than putting it on always active, because it's always good to test these kind of things with a piece of redstone. So as you can go ahead and break that, if you get into some kind of loop, you could have somebody help you out and just destroy that redstone to turn it off. So for now, I've actually turned this off here so that we can go ahead and go enter the square now again, and the slime's going to join here with us. So you can see that I have selected a corner here as our first set of coordinates. When you're creating a DX, DY, DZ area, it's usually easiest to just go ahead and find the lowest point in it. So inside of my square, you can see that the lowest point is actually 230, 220, with a Y level of 4 there. So when we check out our coordinates in here, you're going to see that I'm teleporting a player and then to use a XYZ, which is your low point on the DX, DY, DZ area. And then you have a DX, equals 10, a dy equals 10, and a dz equals 10, which looks kind of complicated there, but really all that means is from this position here where we chose our first coordinate, we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We're actually starting on the first block to the right of it. So that would make us right here at 10 blocks of a distance in the Z. And then the other direction, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, which I counted again wrong in the first block. But anyways, that's 10 blocks across on the X coordinate. And as you can see, I also represented it with 10 blocks here on these frog lights. And that basically is how you choose your area size. So you're going to have your low point, and then you're going to have your distance in your X, your distance in your Z, and then your distance in your Y would be height. So as you can see on my position in the top left corner, when we go in this direction, we're going up on the X coordinate, and on this one in the y, on the Z coordinate is what I'm talking about as far as the distance in X, distance in Z, distance in Y. So now just to kind of mess with this a little bit, if we wanted to go ahead and select this where it was just a distance of like one block. So if we wanted to just choose this first block of frog light right in the corner there, and we wanted to turn that into um, our teleporting area so that only the one block was teleporting us, we'll turn that back on. And you can see when I enter that one block now, because I put a distance of one, it's going to teleport us. But when I <clears throat> when I approach the rest of the square, we're safe now. Now, if we wanted to make this a different shape, say we wanted to have it back at 10 for our width. So put a DX and a DZ of 10 again, but we want it to be really, really tall. We could put 100 on the Y, and that would do this exact same square, but it's going to take our frog lights and it's going to move them way up 100 blocks. So anywhere I fly into that, you can see that I was way up there. I'm not going to go up the 100, but we'll go above those frog lights and... Bam, it grabs me now. So that's how you change your height would be the DY. You change your width with the DX and the DZ. Now it doesn't have to be a square, it could be a rectangle. So if we go with our Z coordinate, we'll change that one to say 100 again. So now it's gonna still be very tall because we left the Y at 100. And now in this direction here that we're running is the Z. It's gonna grab me in that 10, air, uh, 10 block wide area for 100 blocks wide this way. Oh. Did I not? Oh, I left no redstone on there. Do, 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 do. We gotta turn it back on. All right, so when you actually have it turned on, it'll grab you over here in this area and send you back still. So basically, if you picture that, now we have that very tall um, square and it's 10 blocks wide stopping at those frog lights and it's gonna go 100 blocks in this direction here. 
Now, a hundred blocks is pretty long. You could put that at a thousand blocks and go forever, but once you get yourself over a hundred, you got to make sure that you keep this command block that's always active here or has need, you know, has a piece of redstone activating it. it needs to actually be located in a ticking area or this isn't always going to work. So for commands such as the world border or if you're remotely running the commands and stuff like that for a large game, you got to make sure you always keep these guys in a ticking area. Little pro tip there. So as far as the command goes, it pretty much looks like this. Each time it would be an X, a Y, and a Z coordinate, a DX, a DY, and a DZ coordinate. But as far as the other part of the command goes, this last set of coordinates is your actual landing for the teleportation. And you don't have to do a teleport command. You could make lots of different types of things happen. Um, it really just depends on what you're using the DX, DY, DZ for. But basically, it's a good way to select a group of players or a player if they're in a square room or something like that, rather than trying to make a radius, because if we did a radius of 10 from the center of this, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 at the widest point. And then we would go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 diagonally. And you can see that this kind of makes a large, larger area that's harder to control. So when you're trying to make something more exact, like a world border, you want to make sure that you use the DX, DY, DZ. If you want to go ahead and check out my next video here, I will post a link at the top, and it will be for the world border using a scoreboard rather than a tag. Thank you very much for watching. Please go ahead and like and subscribe over here at Arctic Shark Games on YouTube and Arctic Shark Games on Twitch.